Hey everyone, and welcome to the Marvel Snap Decks of the Week. As always, we've got seven deck lists for you, and we're getting started with our Tier 1 Plus, or Tier S one might say, and that's Thanos. Now, it needs no introduction, Thanos has been running absolutely rampant right now. The deck list is absolutely incredible. It's tried, tested, and true. If you're trying to get to Infinite, if you just want to rank up, and you're going to be as ruthless about it as possible, this is the list you play. It's incredible. It literally needs no introduction. Do you really want me to walk you through it? I don't think I need to. I've walked you through the last couple weeks. It has remained at the top of the meta. I uh, sure he has tried to compete with it but quite frankly it has been the top and uh, with that being said we're looking forward to a balanced patch which should be dropping either this week or the next which is going to completely shake, uh, shake up the meta so if you're looking forward to that hit the like button because you know I am definitely looking forward to it and I can't wait to keep you guys up to date with the ever evolving meta However, with that being said, Thanos definitely does remain at the top. It just has too much great synergy. The Lockjaw Quinjet engine with the stones is too good. Leech coming out on turn four under most circumstances, possibly even earlier on turn three if you get Quinjet into the Lockjaw stones. It's just crazy. The stones themselves are wild, right? You're looking at the Space Stone giving you a ton of access. The Time Stone giving you that early Leech. The deck's just incredible, and it's free value for Devil Dinosaur because your hand's always massive. It just does so much well. It needs no introduction at this point. Let's talk about deck number two. Speaking of no introduction, well, Shiri rounds out tier one, and it comes to no surprise to most of you guys. Shiri is an absolutely incredible card. Its ability to double the power is significant when running in conjunction with something like a Red Skull because who cares about the plus two power you're giving everyone else when you're a 30 and then you just Taskmaster it at the end of the day while also having the ability to play arrow to disrupt their hand significantly. The latest version of Shuri is running Cosmo and Armor in order to basically prevent Shang-Chi from being a factor onto the uh, the initial kind of play of Red Skull. Well, giving the opportunity on turn 6 to kind of weave and dodge where you're going to be able to play that Taskmaster because obviously can't be played on top of Cosmo. Arrow provides you with that added utility that you need. Vision, an interesting backup plan if you don't pull Red Skull. And She-Hulk is just... It's She-Hulk, right? This deck list has been truly remarkable. It has been a pretty defining one of the current meta. I do think that Thanos is technically technically better so if you're trying to really run to infinite and you have Thanos you don't have Shuri well then you run the Thanos but Shuri is much less expensive it's 3,000 tokens however don't spend tokens on her because there's a chance this all gets nerfed right so this week literally so anyways yes Shuri is a tier one deck list uh you know at the current time of recording but perhaps not for long. Now, the thing I really like about Marvel Snap and card games in general is that when there's a certain deck that kind of gets out of control like Thanos is, you often get an opportunity to design decks that really counteract that. So if you're against them, you just kind of laugh and say, well, I'm going to win, bro, because I've got Killmonger and I've got Darkhawk. And uh, what are you going to do now? Because... Quite frankly, you have so many options. I love the Scarlet Witch splash as well. Zabu making work done with the Dark Hawk, Shang-Chi, Rock Slide. Sarah for that miracle play on turn six. It's a great deck list, and uh, it's tier two because, quite frankly, it doesn't have the outright like unfair consistency that Thanos does or the outright unfair power levels that Shuri does. But uh, Sarah Darkhawk's one of those decks that, like, I can see with the post nerfs coming to the Thanos, this could probably be pretty decent. Like, I mean, Darkhawk obviously really benefits from the Thanos, so like it might come down a little bit if Thanos gets nerfed to the point that like Thanos doesn't become that as popular, which I mean, we're kind of hoping for, right? Like, let's be honest. But still, if you're trying to play a deck list that kind of counters, the Thanos based meta. This is a pretty good one as well. Arrow giving you the options against uh, Galactus and against Shuri. You do have your Shang-Chi and of course you have the Dark Hawk combination for Arrow. Uh, not for Arrow, for Thanos. Uh, Arrow is also a problem but not as bad as Thanos. But I mean Arrow is not a problem. I just love Arrow. Arrow is a great card. Uh, perhaps maybe too good one might say too. I would be surprised if Arrow doesn't actually dodge a 5-6 uh, nerfing to be honest with you. But anyways, Sarah Dark Hawk, uh, tier 2 list worth considering if you want to counter Thanos and the current meta. A very common question that I get in the comments section is, Alex, I don't have, uh, you know, Thanos and I want to rank up and I don't have Shuri either. What do I do? Well, you're probably playing Lockjaw Casino because Lockjaw Casino is an absolutely incredible deck that has so many fun features to it. And the fact that it's so good kind of gives me pause to wonder if, like, is Lockjaw actually the problem with Thanos? I don't actually think it is. I think Lockjaw is probably fine. Uh, but you're looking at a pretty wild deck here. And the thing I love about it is, of course, you got the Wasp, which you play into the Lockjaw on turn three. Uh, the Dracula is always great in a Lockjaw based list because Lockjaw wants really greedy cards. And if you have Chavez or or Giganto or Infinite sitting in your hand late. Of course, Dracula hits it. You also have the opportunity to skip a turn five. 
play in your uh, your your sunspot with uh, Infinite. However, this is susceptible to Killmonger later on in the game. Bear that in mind. Killmonger is in about 20% of games right now. The Lockjaw Jubilee combo on turn 4 is absolutely incredible. Uh, playing it that early, you're likely to pull some really good stuff. And really, you have nothing bad you want to pull. That Mjolnir going into the deck, getting pulled out by Jane Foster in conjunction with the Wasp, which you can feed into the Lockjaw. It is a surprisingly consistent deck, despite the fact that it's so casino-oriented. The only way you really lose is you just don't pull Lockjaw. Like, if you don't draw Lockjaw by three, you're drawing, like, turn five, then everything feels terrible, right? Like, you're banking so aggressively on Lockjaw. Sunspot allows you to curve a little bit, but if Lockjaw's not in your hand, it's kind of a retreat condition. It's the one way that you lose. But if you got Lockjaw, this is a really good one for gaining cubes. As I mentioned with the Darkhawk list, sometimes there is an archetype that kind of spawns to counter the other ones. And with Thanos going as wide on the board as they are, um, I mean, you're getting Toxic Control List, which are actually doing a lot of work. And there's a couple things happening here. First of all, taking up space with Green Goblin, which also counters Galactus, which is not popular the way Thanos is, but still a card you see. Uh, you know, debris causing problems with the rocks, just running out of space on the board is a really big issue for Thanos-based players. Um, naturally, if they're Thanos players, they're going to get hit by a ton of the hazmat effect because they have so much uh, on their board right now. Uh, you also have the Luke Cage, of course, Shang-Chi for whatever they pull out of their lockjaw for free. And of course, you have the Absorbing Man, which can kind of go on top of the hazmat, which is a really cool combination. Or you can obviously use Shang-Chi twice because you have Sarah on turn five. So you can actually Shang-Chi and you can Absorbing Man. You can basically double crit two lanes and that always feels like a win condition. I really do like this deck list as well because because it gives you a lot of options with regards to like just how you play. Like the Scorpion into Hazmat Luke Cage combo is just so just brutal for Thanos players, right? Um, this does not have a Killmonger in it naturally because you want to actually play out your stones and leave them on the board. And when their stones are on the board, it's just it's just ammunition for Hazmat, right? So Toxic Control is kind of a go-to list if you want to counter the, uh, the meta. It does not do particularly good against Shuri, unfortunately, because of the lack of arrow. Um, also, Shuri doesn't tend to put a lot of cards on the board so that's why it's tier three it definitely has a good impact on the thanos meta but it's a little more susceptible to shuri so if you see your shuri list you might need to keep your eye on the retreat button. I've been hearing a lot from pool three players that like it can be really frustrating getting your cheeks clapped by pool five cards like Thanos and Galactus and a pool four card like Shuri. And you're like, man, I'm stuck in pool three. I just want to win some cubes. What do I do? Well, I do think that this leech ramp list is a pretty good option. Um, it does have a challenge to it, which I'll explain in a minute, but it does have a lot of good things working for it. The first thing is you got the location control and the power of Scarlet Witch. I do like the trade ability of the Scorpion, specifically into the stones of Thanos. Uh, Ebony Maw just throw, throw into a location. Who cares? You don't need to worry about Ebony Maw because you are playing the Doctor Doom and Odin combo. Absolutely beautiful. Just note that you're in a bit of a retreat situation if you don't have Electro or Wave on turn three. That's a bad thing. Uh, but if you have like a Wave or Electro, like play Leech on turn four. Like seriously, I know it's like Alex, seriously, you're telling me to play Leech? Leech their Leech. Like that's how you win the cubes. Leech their Leech. Get rid of their Leech before it can get rid of you. And then you're off to the races. You have Arrow. Vision's a great option here as well. I love Vision and Rampless, by the way. And of course, you got Chavez to round out the ability to draw the Electro and Wave. The one thing this deck cannot do very effectively is it can't counter Shuri as well. Like Shuri, you have the Arrow, but you can't run Shang-Chi. Like you could run Shang-Chi in this, but like Rampless run really awkwardly with four drops. So Shang-Chi, like what do you do? You play Shang-Chi instead of Doctor Doom? Like that feels terrible, right? So... That's the one disadvantage of Rampless right now is it's a little susceptible to the Shuri, but um, overall, if you're able to get that Leech out pretty fast, you'll find yourself winning more games than not. I gotta tell you, when Namor got buffed, I got super excited because I actually really like this card and I think it's way better than people are giving it credit for. So if you're in pool two, I think an ongoing disrupt list could do you very well. There's a couple things that works really well. Of course, you got the Ant-Man armor. Colossus because how many destroy locations are there? Colossus is one of those cards that like we sleep on honestly It's way better than people think it is because like it just casually does what you need it to do all the time very consistently uh, Lizard's a great card a little susceptible to Thanos, but in pool 2 you shouldn't be seeing Thanos too much The fantastic gives you the additional reach which you need which you lack in this list other than the claw um, Cosmo Shang-Chi, which is great because you need to get rid of those pesky double dinosaurs in pool 2 But what I love here is that you do have the Sandman, but most importantly the spectrum at the end It's a nice top off to the list you're building here you have the reach of claw you have the ability to use captain marvel this is blue marvel actually blue marvel and claw can reach into the namor lane but the nice thing about namor 
Listen, this card's huge. It's a 411 as it is. 413 with Spectrum. You can claw it as well for the plus six. There's so much. Like, no more by itself should just win a location. It's that simple. The other locations, Ant-Man, Armor, and whatever the hell else you want to put there. So, like, really, this list is pretty interesting to pilot. It's really straightforward. And if you're in Pool 2, it's a good option. Thank you guys so much for watching. I've got another video for you down below if you'd like to continue watching some Marvel Snap content. And we'll see you in the next Marvel Snap video.